Hello everyone. Welcome to Redline Collectibles. Today is yet another exciting box opening. I kind of have an idea of what's inside this box, but you know, as we've done in the past, you never know until you open the contents and take a look for yourself. And I thought the best way to do this and to share the excitement is to do it together. So there it is. I got Bob in the back. He's approving. Right, Bob? <laughs> so what do we have here? I'm not sure how these are placed in the box, but I can tell you one thing. This particular collector is very meticulous about how he packs his parts. Oh, I'm so glad that he did this. The uh, I love bubble wrap, guys. If you um, have red lines and or, you know, cars that are going to be transported around the country, I highly encourage you to consider utilizing the, uh, what I call this bubble wrap, really inexpensive. These are little packets that <clears throat> when you wrap them up, it has some adhesive on the side here and it allows for a nice snug you know, containment of the beauty that lurks inside. And this one is absolutely gorgeous. Light my firebird in red. Now this particular box, I think, if I remember is right, contains many light my firebirds. So if you're a fan, if you enjoy this casting, the beauty, the elegance, the history, the spoiler series, Light My Firebird, these cars, every single one of them, is going to be sold in an auction on my Facebook site called Studio Dash Redline. I run most every Tuesday night over on the studio. We start typically at 6.30 Central. And typically what I'm running is your nicer, you know, if you will, your higher end. Not necessarily expensive, but the kind of cars that you're looking to add an upgrade to your top shelf or thereabout. TNT Bird in Blue. Not too shabby. Nice roundel on there. Original paper roundel. Same thing on the other side. Stripes. A couple little bites here and there. Cowl is still there. Good, good. Light my firebird and a TNT bird side by side. What I'll do is I'll open this up a little bit more. So I guess let me get this box out of the way for just a tad. And what I'll do is let me grab several of these together at one time and then I'll open this um, so we can keep the party going, so to speak. <laughs> you know, there's going to be, in fact, I, I can see through the through the plastic that there's going to be some surprises in here as well. I don't know how many cars in this collection came in. I don't remember the number. But what this collector does, and I'm hoping... If you're going to send me a consignment for cars, I'm always real interested in having pictures sent ahead of time so that I can review ahead of what, you know, makes sense. Because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a buyer, I'm a reseller. I also run a website, my wife and I run a little website called redlinecollectibles.com. So if you're in the vicinity, you're on the, you know, you're perusing around and you're looking for some... You know, casual shopping, the site that we have, redlinecollectibles.com, offers you a buy it now opportunity 24-7. There are many, many cars up there right now that I think you want to take a look at because they're very worthy. They got clean attributes to them. Not too shabby of a custom Barracuda in Hong Kong Copper. Little stressor right there on the on the the front windscreen. 
1967 base, tail light paint. Some of it's still there. Yeah, maybe someone will be able to upgrade their copper Barracuda. There's a Hemi power plant. Let's get him up here. Let me clear these out of the way so you can see the see the cars as we're accumulating them up here. I think I've got maybe 30 cars. I'm not positive. I have to do a double check of the of the list that he had given me. There's a clean evil weevil for you. It's blue. It's a sweetheart. Evil Weevil, dark interior, moonroof slider works as it should, single seater, long extended steering wheel inside. Those are sweethearts, not too bad, no disappointments. This whole collection, when I saw the pictures, I immediately was drawn to the desirable castings. You're not going to find me doing a lot of your concept cars, you know, your splitting images, Torero, Turbo Fire, Twin Mill. I'm, I'm more, I'm gravitating or trying to gravitate more towards, look at this red. Hey, got a number six and a number three. Look at those. How about those? Slightly different shade of red. Try to keep um, cars on our website and also during the auction of being desirable castings. And I get it. You know, there are some of you that really love to, you know, get a rainbow. If it was me and I was looking to, to really an inexpensive, perhaps, way of approaching a rainbow would be the Toreros, the Turbo Fires, the Twin Mills. The splitting images because there are not only the number of colors that were applied to those concept cars back in 1969 but also the shades so you have like you know for instance the the shade of blue you got dark blue icy blue you have different tonings of the blue and then the interiors so you'll have a champagne interior you'll have a white interior you know, in some cases, there's darker shades of that brown interior or champagne. There's a 68 base on this custom Firebird in blue. A little bit of a little rub on that cowl. Not too shabby. Put him up on top there. I like 68s. How about you? What's your favorite casting? Are you a... Are you a collector of 1968, the original 16s? Are you a 1969, 1970, the spoiler series as an example? Look what pops out of that little bag. Another Evil Weevil, this one in green with white interior. The other one there, that's a dark interior. This is a light interior. So here's another example of different shades, different interiors, different levels of you know, what kind of base does the car have? Are the wheels nice? Look at these caps. That is a sweetheart of an evil weevil, isn't it? Don't you love them clean like that? I know you're shaking your head yes, because I am too. I'm on the same boat. I'm in the same boat as you. I like clean. I like to look up on my, on my, from my man cave. Uh, I have a Timex machine that has been retrofitted you know, before I started in this craft, in this hobby, I started working for people like you, designers, and also buying collections, is I learned the ins and outs of the castings when I did about a year and a half before I did any selling or serious buying of doing restorations. These are not restorations for sell. They're only for my own, and that's many of those are in my Timex Torley case in my man cave of the year and a half or so of doing restorations, meaning I take the car apart and, if, if you will, reverse engineer it, right? You look and saw how it was manufactured, how Mattel used 
their engineering prowess to come up with a light my fire bird and how the engine is placed in the casting and how it's kept in place you know um, how an interior is placed in the casting and so therefore I understood and understand now much much better when I take the car when I've taken the car apart what goes into it what's vulnerable what is the best way of changing out or swapping or looking for retro, um, retro or reproduction parts. It gave me a, another eye and a, an ability to identify if something's been touched up, if something has been placed in like it isn't supposed to be. Look at this beautiful Hong Kong um, tri-baby. Wow, this one is clean. Now, there you go. I, I really, oh, that... That back hatch is barely moving. That's something else, yeah. Hong Kong colors are a little tougher to find with good, consistent Hong Kong paint. Tri Baby has a lot of surface space with this uh, in this casting, and typically the glass will take a hit, you know, from a smudgy or scratching standpoint. The reds are tough to find clean for whatever reason. These are beautiful caps. The matted paint in the back, I typically see this where actually they didn't spray a lot of black paint perhaps in the manufacturing process and you end up having some of that, in this case, lime kind of coming through a little bit, but that's a gorgeous model, isn't it? I'm just going random here. I don't know what's next. I'm just opening up the bags and you're seeing them when I see them. That's part of the excitement, isn't it? Sharing this love of the red line hobby together. Who doesn't like box openings? I know you do. So the heavy Chevy, I saw this picture and I knew I would see the stripes in there the way that it is, but you know what? There are several of our guests that really love the heavy Chevys. Um, the, the wear on the stripes will take the value down a little bit. But you know what? Someone's still going to get a nice Hong Kong spoiler series. Heavy Chevy. Not too shabby, man. So if you look at the tail of the tape so far, and you look at the number of cars and the type of cars that this particular collector sent to me to sell for, for them on, on their behalf, is um, the number of muscle if you will i'm not talking about camaros and mustangs and such but you know the coveted and desirable early original 16s like this hong kong cougar mm, nice tail paint champagne interior was that a 67 base let's look what the hell? sure enough it's a nice original 16, huh? Mm-hmm. But the number of um, desirable spoiler series, and like I said, those, uh, the castings where Mattel moved more towards, you know, power plants. Look at all those cars there on that second shelf with all the power showing. Those engines are sure desirable, huh? Let's get this guy. Where are you? Another Light My Firebird. This one in olive, guys. Original roundel, original rocker panel stripe. Nice and tail lights. Olive's a tougher color, guys. Mm -hmm. Another spoiler series. Wow, man, this box is chock full of spoilers and muscle machines. Cool. I'll do a close up after the heck I'm done with these. I'll do a quick close up of. Everything that's uh, showing and going to be available in upcoming sales on the studio. None of these cars are going on to the Redline Collectibles site. But um, I have a collection coming in. Oh, we're about three weeks out or so. In fact, I have a couple coming in. And I'm going to put some of those on the website. Look at this kitty. <laughs> Those paper stickers. What a unique thing to do. You know, if you followed me in my channel, first of all, thank you for being here. I, <laughs> I never take your 
your um, your love for red lines and or your participation and support of the channel for granted. I really appreciate you being here. Uh, what I was going to say is, you know, each of these cars are really, if you think about it, they're time capsules from back in the day. And if a car comes in and it has a certain amount of stickers, water slides, you know, no. Uh, I have some, I have put an asterisk after what I'm going to say here, but most of the time, I will leave it the way that it is because I look at it like a time capsule, as I mentioned, and that you're the next owner. It's going to go to you. The baton is being handed to you. The the legendary Hong Kong, uh, Hong Kong or U.S., like this Hong Kong uh, Firebird, um, that you're going to be handling and taking custody of and preserving history. So I don't take those stickers off. I, if no. That said, like I said, asterisk, if someone has really blatantly done a bad job on, you know, putting a stripe in that's just, it's wrong, you know. I use WD-40 uh, that doesn't seem to hurt the finish, Spectra Flame. Now, that said, I'm glad this yellow came up because yellow on this Krabby, yellow was one of the colors that I'll take a Q-tip with water and I will test to see to what extent that paint may or may not be removed inadvertently from the casting. Be very careful with yellow. Be very careful with yellow and also be very careful with red. Hong Kong red, Hong Kong yellow. I don't think I'll have any problem with that, but believe me, I've been down this road. So when I talk about Hong Kong, so the Firebirds as an example, the TNT, those I would be a little hesitant on slabbering with a bunch of water on a Q-tip. The only reason I'm saying that is because I apply Q-tip and water to the cars because when, not only when I conduct an auction, but when I sell a car, uh, well, we, my wife and I, when we get the car to you, it's going to be clean. It's not going to be all, you know, you're going to have to get a rag out and do all kinds of cleaning. We want you to take the car out of the box. Beautiful Hong Kong fleet side here, guys. Ooh, that's a nice original 16. Hmm. Um, we want you to take it out of the box and put it right on your shelf. You don't want to encumber you with having to clean up the cars. That's part of my duty. And that's what we offer to you as a quality seller, reseller of these products. The other thing, too, that allows me when I clean the cars ahead of time, it allows me to see up close and personal um, if there's any flaws, you know, something we should look out for. Look at how this, look at how this uh, collector protected the wing. Isn't that nice? I love how he did that. Thank you, collector. Thank you for taking the time and the, you know, being very, very careful about preserving the original wing on this beautiful apple green U.S. Mighty Maverick. What a gem. Look at the, the hood doesn't flop around. Low, low mileage on this car. Look how beautiful that stripe is. So the U.S. stripe is painted on, it's wide. The Hong Kong stripe is applied, and it is narrow. There's a, one of our collector friends out there. His name is Ken Shack, and I always defer to Ken on <clears throat> the Mighty Mavericks. You know, there are certain people that I go to. They're my go-to people, if you will. And I go to them because I trust their knowledge, their experience with particular castings. There are several people like specialists. Specialists for, like, Mustangs. Specialists for Camaros. Specialists for, like I said, the Mighty Mav. There's a specialist. There's a special guy, and I always go to questions on a sand crab. And you say, well, how many questions can there be about a casting? Well, you know what? When you get something and you're unsure, for instance, about a, you know, a reproduction glass applied or a reproduction part or stickers... You're not sure 100%. Bouncing off someone who you trust and you know is not, you know, is not going to not going to be honest with you. And that's what we've developed over time 
in the red line hobby, the, the circles that I run with, um, people that I trust, people that are honest, people that, you know what, they don't, they want to help you. They want to preserve the integrity of this hobby and, and they want to do it for you. They want to preserve it for you. There's a, so here's a great example. You can see that that hood pin is not seated. Very common with your early original 16s. Not necessarily with the ponies. I see it a lot with Camaros as an example. But, you know, sometimes if you look, you take the tire off, but you look deep inside and you'll see that that, that pin, the pin on the, uh, the hood was not seated properly into the receptor underneath the hood there. That's good. That's a good example of an antifreeze, white interior, original 16, a little bit later run. You can tell by the paint on the back. Put him in the front. Antifreeze is a fun color. Got a couple more for you. Thanks for hanging in there. I know this uh, video is 21 minutes and plus, but I think, you know, what we're trying to do is dispense some valuable hot wheel red line information for you. Something that you can really sink your teeth into. Here's a double punch. That's why that secondary little indentation is in the base metal is that was a punch then punched again. <laughs> you know, we often refer to that affectionately and with a little bit of silliness about being built on a Friday or someone said, no, no, it was built early on a Monday morning. <laughs> you know, the, the post machine wasn't lined up properly and zing, zang, zoom. Oh, she goes into uh, into a blister pack and uh, shows up on an auction. It's a original 1969 GT70. Is that what you are? Mm -hmm. Green enamel. Later runs. Got the peg stop in the back. STP sticker. Do you remember collecting stickers in grade school? <laughs> we did that. You know, we, would, we would trade them. We would swap them. No one was buying anything. You were always you brought your stickers to school. <laughs> and then you could trade them. You know what we also did? We went to local car dealerships and we asked for their stickers that they put on the back of the cars, you know, and for sell for selling. <laughs> and then I, you know, we go over, I'm never I'll never forget this. There was a Ford dealership in the Milwaukee area called Jack White Ford. And it they had this their bumper or their stickers to advertise, you know, where the car was purchased from. And the Jack White name was something that we all kind of liked and I got a big hoard of those one time. I got the Barbasol, you know, the Bud Light Man, you know, or Budweiser Man, not the Bud Light, Bud, Budweiser Man with the cape on. <laughs> you know, the stickers from back in the day, and we trade those STP, of course, Bardol. <laughs> you know, I'm aging myself here, right? I'm aging myself inadvertently. Got a couple more for you. We have a total of um, five more if you happen to hang in there. I know we're, again, we're running a little bit late, but you know what? <clears throat> you can take it in bites if you want to. Take it in bites. I didn't want to split this thing up. Just have it one solid box opening for you. Do a like and subscribe and uh, share the content. We're looking to build a good audience and following for what we're doing here so that I can do much, much more of this type of thing, which is the Hot Wheels Red Line. You know, they're going away. I mean, Mattel only made Red Lines for nine years. So what you're finding here is a legendary opportunity to grab some beauty, add it to your Red Line collection. They're not making them anymore. <laughs> and, uh... Wow, that's a nice prowler. I mean, uh, a nice demon. Mmm, shiny. And it's got the um, got the brown interior. Hmm. Sometimes you see it in black. Also comes in white. Let's put him over here. I'll do a, a quick a quick perusal before we end the video. I'll show you exactly what we had here. I don't want to have this thing go much more than than much time we have right now. But look, tumble out of here. An original 16 and absolutely gorgeous gold. Silhouette. Look at those reds on there, guys. Beauty. Roll bars clean. Glasses clean. Hello, darling. You are a sweetheart. You're going right up there on the top. That's a beautiful gold. I love that color. Space for two more here. Going to make some space here for you. Come on now. Let's get some, let's get some space for two more, shall we? Let's do it.
There we go. I'm gonna put some, uh, I'm gonna be wobbly around here. Okay. Two more. Two more. We're on this kitty. Nitty gritty kitty. Wow, nothing like saving one of the beautiful ones for the end, huh? In red. That's a sweetheart. Thank you, Redline Collector. Thank you for sending me these beautiful cars to sell for you. Really, really appreciate that. Thank you for having the confidence in, in what we do to make life fun. I always say this, too, is that our show, our auctions are always conducted in the highest level of integrity. I call them G-rated shows because I never want the auction to fall off the tracks, to go down a, you know, an area where people may be, I know I would be, I, I try, look at that, you can see my iPhone 11 there, <laughs> is uh, try to keep the auctions clean. You know, no verbal, you know, outbursts, no bad language. I mean, it's just a given nowadays that you want to conduct yourself in a high level of professionalism, and that's what you get with, with my auctions. My wife and I really believe in conducting that level of integrity for everybody without exception. So, all right, let's do this. Let's, um, let's disembark here for a minute <laughs> and do a quick look at what the heck came out of this beautiful box. There they are, ladies and gentlemen, an absolutely beautiful array of different red line colors castings, interiors, everything we've talked about today. And, you know, why you collect, you know, legendary pieces that will always be a part of, you know, either your generation or you're going to pass it on to somebody else that maybe didn't have the opportunity to enjoy red lines or to learn about red lines or to acquire and to put on a shelf where you can really enjoy the beauty of this masterful spectra flame magic there they are ladies and gentlemen as i said and thank you again for being here do like subscribe and share what we're doing here redline collectibles there's bob overseeing the action here until we meet again god bless everybody bye now